Today on Rolling Home, we're going to be talking about a van build. More specifically, my son's van build on this edition of Rolling Home. Today, we have a special guest with us, happens to be my son. If you remember on a previous podcast, I mentioned that my son was going to be building a van out. And he's going to tell us about that today. Happens to be an old church van, which he obtained for a song. And it has some great details I'd like for him to share about it. Welcome today, Caleb. How you doing, Caleb? Good. How's it going? So you're a avid listener of the Rolling Home podcast, right? I am. You've listened to each and every podcast from beginning to end. I, I have listened to most of them, I think. <laughs> most of them. Well, um, I had mentioned quite a while ago about uh, your van build. And we kind of, you know, I've done a lot of podcasts since then. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you came to, what kind, first, what kind of van it is and how you came to in possession of this van, okay? And what your plans are for it. Yeah, so we have a, a 2000 uh, Dodge Ram uh, Maxi van. So it's a, it's, I think it's a 12 passenger, if I remember right. Um, and it's an extended version um, from that year. So, uh, it's a it's a good platform. It's not a tall van, but it's just a normal kind of uh, passenger van. Um, but yeah, we I was working for a church uh, at the time a few years ago, and they had uh, an old van that they that they hadn't been using. I just asked them, you know, uh, what their what their plans were for it. Um, they had had somebody. It was during the a few years ago when there were a lot of catalytic converters were being stolen off of vehicles and i had asked them about um that they had they had had the catalytic converter stolen off of it so they were trying to figure out you know if they were going to get it fixed or whatever and i asked them what they were if they ever thought about selling it because they didn't really use it it was, an, it was an older one that they just had sitting around so anyway so i i ended up buying it for a decent price and um uh, fixed it because I, I knew I knew I could fix that pretty easily, so I just got the part, fixed it, and then um, we, uh, my wife and I, obviously, um, Dad knows this, but um, we had a, a we have a almost one year old now, so she she was born obviously about a year ago, and so we we didn't get as much work on done on it over the past year, but we've started working on it, and so. Um, we're kind of in the process of, of building it out at this point. So we've, I've been working on, um, we can get into that, I guess, but we've, yeah. we've kind of in earnest, uh, I went through it and, and, um, kind of changed all, a lot of the fluids and filters and all that stuff. And then now we're in the process of actually trying to build it out to use it as a, as a travel van. So, so the biggest mechanical problem was the lack of a Cadillac converter, huh? Yeah, so you know, during that time when that was happening a lot, I guess it still happens, but somebody just came in and hacked it off. Um, so um, I was able to order a, an assembly and and kind of get it put back on. So it wasn't too wasn't too difficult, but um, obviously somebody who doesn't have isn't mechanically inclined or whatever, it it might have been something that was more, um, you know, which I don't claim to be the most mechanically inclined, but I know how to fix simple things. So. I knew yeah. that that was a pretty simple fix, but a lot yeah. of people today don't have any sense about those things. So, um, so anyway, it worked out well. And, um, and yeah, so we're now in the process of actually trying to build it out. Yeah. Well, you know, church vans are actually a, a, a good platform to start from on a church build. Um, for one, uh, churches maintain those things. They may not be, yeah. be, you know, they're not driven that much necessarily but they do maintain them. They change the oil. Um, you know, they keep, you know, regular, the regular maintenance up. They seem to, you know, most of them, I would think, you know, take it when it's due for certain stages of its life cycle. And this van, how many miles does it have on it? Right now it's got about 53,000. So 
it's fairly low miles um you know for the year model obviously it's a you know 20 23 24 year old van and mm-hmm. 53,000 mm-hmm. miles on it so it was mostly just used for you know around town trips and things for the church i guess um yeah and I think that the I don't have a, a lot of records, but I do think that the maintenance was was kept up pretty well on it. Um, it seemed like the all the fluids and all the different you know filters and things looked like they had been changed. The battery was fairly new when I bought it, so um, I think they kept it up pretty good. Um, and then obviously low being low miles like that was 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 always good. So. So they had bought another van. This was just kind of sitting. Yeah, they had some newer vans that they uh, that they had been using more for for their new. Yeah. And I think that they just had this one sitting around. So. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll send me some photos that I can share with our listeners. You know, because we do have a blog, a complimentary blog, rollingforhome.wordpress.com. Okay. And uh, you know. I, we could post some photos there. I know you you took some when you first got it and you've been taking a few along the way. So I know the first thing you did when you got it was, uh, of course, you did your inspection. You did whatever you needed to do, you felt like maintenance wise. But then you took the seats out of it uh, because I know I have those in my storage unit mm-hmm. and really nice seats. I mean, they have no visible really tears or wear or anything like that. And you said, you told me um, not long ago, you thought you were going to put the front seat immediately behind the uh, two, the driver's seat and the passenger seat back in the van. That's part of your build. Yeah. So we, the first thing we did was we obviously fixed the catalytic converter and then um, I just, I changed the oil. I, um, it had a pulley that was, making some squeaking so I, I fixed that i put a new belt on it um yeah i changed the the transmission pan was leaking so i changed the transmission transmission uh, pan gasket and put a new filter on it. so i did a lot of the just the maintenance things yeah um, still a couple things that I, I need to do but put some new shocks on it and things like that so trying to just make it um change the differential fluid just a lot of just maintenance stuff that i'm sure if it had been done or not just to make it as roadworthy as possible um, and I still have some more of that to do, but um, a lot of that's been done. But yeah, and then from the build standpoint, um, we kind of were trying to decide what we want to do. We were thinking potentially to build it more with built-in shelving and really make it like a, a you know a full build. But I think our our plan at this point is to do like a hybrid. Um, it's not a tall van, so it's not the tall version, kind of like your van where you can yeah. stand up in it and everything. But um, there's a decent amount of space, but because of that, we were thinking, okay, how, how are we going to use it? So we're probably going to use it as a mixture of like a family vehicle around wherever we're going and then kind of an adventure vehicle. So um, what we're going to end up doing, I think, is um, we're, we're putting in soundproofing right now. So I've almost got that done all throughout the vehicle just to help with road noise and everything. And then we're going to add some, we're taking out the original paneling and stuff inside she's got some vinyl paneling over the um, kind of the walls and things and so taking that off and and we're going to take the pieces and do kind of like a template and do some nicer um kind of like probably some nice like birch plywood or something like that and yeah. and rebuild those panels so that it looks nicer inside um and probably replace the the carpet with like a vinyl just to make it easy to clean but basically, the idea would just be we're going to try to make it as functional as possible so we can use it like as a mixture of pickup truck when we're not traveling. But then when we're traveling, we can uh, it's nice inside and uh, we can camp inside um, or we can just use it as like a travel vehicle with lot, lots of space for, for, for things and all that. Um, but we're probably going to put in like a, a Max Air fan. I know you had, you had said that's the, the kind of fan that we should get and put in for airflow if we do stay inside and just so try to make it a hybrid of kind of a you know just a almost mm-hmm. like an suv slash camper van mm-hmm. yeah multi-purpose multi-use that's yeah sort of just it. make it as practical as possible so that if we want to camp in it we can but also we can use it you know we you know this but we um you know we travel for uh, my wife's family live in indiana and ohio so we go up there a lot so a vehicle that's big and has a lot of room inside for if we want to camp on the way or if we want to 
you know, just have a bigger vehicle to sometimes mm-hmm. it's nice to take stuff when you're traveling and things. Yeah. So. so the, so the, I mentioned earlier, you said that you were think you were going to put the bench seat that's right behind the front. Oh, yeah. seat. So the setup, yeah, I think the way the, the setup we we're thinking about doing uh, is at first, at least because of our daughter. So we want to, we'll put her right behind us. So we'll have the, the two chairs in the front. And then there's one of the seats in our van, the way it works is it's got side doors that open up kind of like out, uh, Mm -hmm. not a sliding door. So um, it's got kind of a step that you step up in. So the the seat that's right behind the two front seats is kind of a smaller seat because of the way that it's it's built and and the other ones behind it are a little bit, or they're they're the full length. So I think we're gonna put in the smaller one back in and that'll be where we put her her car seat and stuff um and then we'll have the whole back area we'll we'll have the other two seats that we could put in if we wanted to but we'll probably keep those but then we'll leave that all open in the back and we can use that for we can put a mattress back there or um like a cooler and and all that kind of thing so yeah we're yeah. planning on just building it around having that front seat and then the two kind of yeah. actual front have seats you, and that one and right behind it yeah have you measured the actual space that you're going to have behind the bench seat back to the rear of the van. I know that is a long van. I know just looking at it and maybe you'll share some pictures with me that I can share, but looking at it over the, behind the rear wheel well, it goes back. What? Gosh, I I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I think that I've measured it before, but I'm trying to think, but I think it's, um, I think from the very back to the to the to the two front seats, uh, it's either ten or twelve feet, something like that. Yeah. So you so have plenty. After, of- yeah, I think after the seats in there, it'll give you at least you know eight feet or so, eight to ten. Yeah, I mean, feet. You have plenty of room behind the seat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know a lot of times on these van builds, just by reading, you know what people have done, they run into problems with space and you, you will never solve the headroom space, obviously, because I know you're not planning on putting a, whatever, a topper on it or anything. But as far as a van for a platform that you're looking at, you have a ton of space in this thing. I mean, um, what do they call it? I think the side doors are the barn doors. I think that's what they call them when they open up, you know, like they do. I know on my on my ProMaster, they're in the back. Obviously, I got a sliding door on the side, but then the back, you know, they have the barn doors. But well, you have the barn doors on the side. If anyone's, you know, if you're not familiar with this model of van. Now, one of the things and the challenges I think you have with this van is you have a lot of windows, and you kind of alluded to that earlier. You're planning on uh, making some special. Uh, covers for the windows is that what you're thinking or are you just going to black them out what do you th- I mean, it's all, they're already blacked out i noticed quite a bit yeah they're already tinted pretty dark but i think we'd either get them tinted even darker um or we would just make some coverings for the inside of them for for when we want it to be more private but mm-hmm. they're pretty dark but um so i don't think that's something we have to do right well, away but sleep in there or something you probably want them completely covered yeah but, it, but they're pretty they're pretty dark as it as it is but yeah we'd probably either build some uh we'd probably make some kind of kind of covers for them just to put yeah. up when we want to sleep or whatever and then um you know or we could just get them tinted darker but and tell people just a little bit about this platform they may not be uh, completely familiar with the platform it's a 3500 Mm-hmm. Uh, Dodge Ram. Tell us a little bit about, about the capacity and the maybe the what it can haul and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a one ton van, so it's it's got the heavier rear axle and things like you have on a one ton uh, leaf spring, you know, um, uh, suspension and things. So it's it's a one ton platform, so that's nice. It gives you the extra you know payload and everything. Um, it's uh those those were not the some of the older vans were built body on frame and this is kind of a hybrid it's kind of like a um kind of like a jeep cherokee xj where it's technically not a frame it's a it's a unibody but it's kind of a a hybrid version of that it was the same it was the same era 
So mm -hmm. uh, this is 2000, um, but you know, those, you know, you have one of those, so, you know, but yeah. um, you know, the XJ has, it's, it's not a, it's not a traditional frame, but it's, so it's kind of a mixture. It's kind of like a, it's like a hybrid yeah. frame. So when you look under it, you, it looks like a frame. It's technically a unibody, but um, yeah. yeah, it's a heavier, it's a one ton van, heavier suspension, heavier drive. Train. Towing, it's got a towing um, package on it already. Yeah. It's got a towing package. I think it's, so, I think it, I think the towing capacity is like 7,000 pounds or something like that. So it's, wow. it's not yeah. crazy, but it's not, it, you know, that's, it's yeah. good. Well, it's like um, a, you know, what a, a, a pickup, normal pickup, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's it's. I think it's got the heavier. I think the, I think ours has like the extra towing kind of package on it or whatever too. So it's it's supposed to, and it's got a, a thirty five gallon tank. So it's you know it's like wow. a you know it holds a lot of fuel, um, and I think for this year, I can't remember if, if there was a, like a V six or an inline six option, but there were at least a couple of engines there's the 5.2 v8 and then there was the um then there was the 5.9 v8 so the, the larger one ours is the 5.2 so it's um it's a good it's, mix it's still a yeah it's it's plenty of power and everything for what we need um so um yeah so it's it's a good platform um i like the idea of having the uh you know kind of like your van has the uh is a one ton platform mm -hmm. um you know it's nice to i know some people build on like a, a half ton van or or what have you and that's i know you can add capacity with heavier suspension things but it's yeah. kind of nice to have the heavier um you know not that i got to choose i just but it, it's nice that it happens to be the one ton platform for the extra capacity and all that stuff so you're not going to be as worried about um weight and things but but that's mm -hmm. one thing that we wanted to do with the way we want to build it is um we want it to be really flexible. So we don't want to, we don't want to build in a bunch of stuff that's going to have to stay in there all the time. Um, we want to make it pretty, um, just pretty, pretty open platform so that. You're a good spot for that. I know we've discussed a little bit about power and, uh, you know, you could go, you know, you could wire it up and, you know, you could install some either, a AGM or lithium batteries on board or anything, or you could go the route of a self-contained system. I mean, you're going to have to put some, I assume you're planning on putting some solar panels on the roof. Um, so you can hook into those either way. Um, so you're kind of leaning toward the self-contained system, right? Yeah. I had originally thought, I mean, I want to keep it as simple as possible, but I'd originally thought that we'd have to get some batteries and things, but um, I know from talking to you and just doing a little research and things, um, it seems like some of the power stations, I guess is what they call them now, but um, that seems like a, I, there's probably more that you could do if you wired everything in, but I'm not really concerned with having wired in lights and wired in this and that. I'm not, I mean, I don't mind just having to have a, having to have stuff reach and like, you know, having one place with outlets and all that stuff. So, I think probably what we'd end up doing, um, and we might not do it right away, but we'd probably not do a bunch of wiring. Um, yeah. probably just leave probably the only wiring that we probably want to do is for the fan and then leave the, um, like a, a way to, to, to access the, yeah. if we do solar panels to access the cords for the solar panels, the cables yeah. for the solar panels, but then just use one of those power yeah. stations for everything. Well, one thing you might take a look at is even though you're planning on the self-contained power system, you know, that you can, you know, take in and out or whatever, you may want to look at maybe at least adding one AGM or lithium battery that you could hook in to take the stress off of your, um, your chassis battery, like when you're mm -hmm. docking and stuff mm -hmm. and you can run some lights and things like that, that would be a nice convenience thing. That way you could just flip on the lights in the cab and all the lights. That'd be pretty easy to wire up, you know, just a thought. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I haven't really thought of that. that's one of the things that um, seems like it takes a lot of time to figure out is the uh, the wiring and the uh, the electrical system and all that stuff. So I haven't really thought about that a ton. But we're trying to think about it enough because I don't want to have to pull stuff out again. So I'd like um, to get the wiring done when we're as we're building it instead of having to uh 
to, to redo it later. So, yeah, I don't know what you're thinking about as far as, you know, you're going to try to hide the wires, whatever wires you do put in it, hide it behind your paneling or whatever you're going to put in there. But some people use track stuff, you know, where you can, it's not as elegant looking necessarily, but it's, you have your wires like on a, you know, these little track things that, you know, hide the wire, but they're, you see them in buildings sometimes when they add wiring and stuff later. Uh, you might want to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a Max Air fan is definitely a necessity. <laughs> you know, in the summer, um, you know, you're going to need a way to get that heat out of that, out of that van. And you, you said you didn't really have any interest in any kind of air conditioner or anything like that. Um, so well, we have the uh, on our van. We're not going to obviously use it all the time, but we have a rear air and heat. So if we yeah. really needed it we could run the van and have well that's another thing if you were to wire it up like i was mentioning you could make it to where you could plug in your power unit mm -hmm. and you could probably i don't know how those air conditioners work on vehicles but you might you could probably do some research you might even be able to run that thing yeah you might be able to um but i i at the very least you could run it when the vehicle's running so um yeah and and i'm thinking that when we put in we're trying to we're even though we're keeping it simple with the build we're um we're adding in the the sound deadening and we're adding in the insulation so we've already got some insulation that we we haven't installed it yet but uh, mm -hmm. we're doing the sheep's wool insulation which is supposed to be additional sound barrier and also supposed to be really uh, high r value so um hopefully in theory we'll have a pretty insulated van um so if we were to run the AC, for instance, it, it should cool it down really quickly. We wouldn't have to keep it on all the time. If we had the fan, hopefully we can regulate the temperature a lot. And we we may or may not want to, you know, um, we may or may not want to use the van, you know, uh, depending on what kind of what kind of systems we install and everything. You know, here and you know where we live, it gets really hot in the summer. So if it's 105 degrees, we're probably not going to be camping you know anyway but it's probably going to be more when it's when the weather's a little bit better yeah and depending on what kind of power unit we've discussed this a little bit but depending on what kind of power unit you put in there you can just you can run you can run an electric heater off of those i know some people put these um all oh, these chinese diesel um heating units in them but those are people that are more you know making them build building them out for you know, mm -hmm. you know, camping exclusively. So yeah, you got a lot of options. You got a lot of plug and play options. Uh, and I'd be interested to, I know you're probably keeping track of all your expenses and all that sort of thing, but just to give people an idea, uh, maybe we can do a follow up or two podcast, um, and show some pictures. Like I said, maybe even do a YouTube walk around. You can show some of the stuff that we talked about tonight. Um, but in the, you know, be sure and you know share share some photos and i know you probably have some and i can at least add them to the blog for this podcast yeah so what's That's your cool. goal what's your timeline as far as getting the, this thing ready and where you can maybe start using it well we were wanting to have it ready by thanksgiving but that's that's not going to happen so <laughs> um yeah we just it's just been taking longer we've been busy with other things but um but we We've gotten most of the sound deadening in. We have the insulation. We need to get the paneling and stuff built and um, ready. Really need to figure out the wiring stuff and what we want to do with that so that we can, um, you know, get that done before we want to. So we need to get the fan. We need to get some some floor, like some the flooring and, and a, a few different pieces. But um, so we still have quite a bit to do um, with the interior. Also, the exterior is not, there's no, there's no rust underneath, like that's actually a problem, but there is some surface rust and things. So we want to paint the outside. Um, and then we want to get new tires before we travel. So we just, we have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Well, but, and the, um, yeah, the cool thing about a van like this, and when, when the, when the listeners see the photos, they'll be able to see what we're talking about. Very, it's very stealth, very mm -hmm. stealth, you know. You, you won't be able to, you won't sure won't be able to tell that it's like, say you stop on a Walmart parking lot, and you spend the night, you won't even be able to tell there's anybody in there. Yeah. Just like yeah. A, a random white van sitting on the parking lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we just want to make it pretty nice and something that we can use for a long time, um, you know, for, for all kinds of stuff. So I did do once you once you acquired the van, as we kind of wrap this thing up, I did do a little bit of searching for that particular model. And I noticed there's a few videos on some builds, but not many. So, you know, you might want to consider doing your own YouTube video and throwing it out there because uh, might be some folks. Like I said, it's a great platform and, um, you know, maybe some other folks want to do what you're doing because you're talking about, you know, people who spend tens of thousands of dollars either buying a pre-built van. But I mean, you literally are going to be, you know, from what I'm hearing, you're going to think you're going to have this thing roadworthy and camp worthy for very little money. Yeah, hopefully. So it'll be pretty. Yeah. Pretty, we're trying to keep it as low cost as possible, but you know, it does take some yeah. money, but um, but yeah, we're trying to keep it as affordable as possible, yeah. All right, well, anything else we didn't cover on this uh review of your van before we wrap this thing up? I don't think so. That's basically where we're at right now. We have a lot of work to do, some more planning with the wiring and things to figure out, um, but um. But yeah, it's coming together and we're we're excited to uh to get it, you know, to the point where we can start using it. We kind of want to get it fairly completed before we start using it just to you know, yeah. get it get it looking good and get it everything working and everything, but so it's it's been fairly time consuming, but um but it's it's a fun project and we're looking forward to using it for a long time. So yeah. Well, there are a lot of resources on YouTube. It may not be that specific model. It might not even be that uh, make and model, but there are a lot of great resources about people who have built, taken even church vans or whatever and built them out and made great camping platforms out of them. So, yeah. Okay. Well, appreciate it, Caleb, for joining me tonight. And um, once again, if you want to, uh, consider subscribing, following the podcast. I'd appreciate it. If you want to check out the blog, it's rollingforhome.wordpress.com. And as always, see you again soon on another edition of Rolling Home. And remember, home is where you park it. See you again soon. Mm -hmm.